Hey guys, on this week's episode of my book review, I chose The Four Agreements, a Toltec wisdom book by M Miguel Ruiz. Technically, it's Don Miguel Ruiz, but uh, typically it just goes by Miguel Ruiz, I believe. On my journey to read 52 books in 52 weeks, this is not necessarily in order uh, of which book, what, uh, I'm not reading these uh, or reviewing these books in order in which I read them, but I am going over the books I have read in the last, um, man, almost 30 weeks or 35 weeks. I started my journey back in uh, the fall of last year, of 2015. Now we are mid-year 2016, uh, July-ish. Um, but this is the Practical Guide to Personal Freedom, a Toltec wisdom book, The Four Agreements. Um, the four agreements are broken down into four agreements. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to hold my spot here with this and give you a little preface of uh, what this is. Now, this is a very small book, as you can see, uh, or if you can't see, it's very small, it's thin, um, maybe half inch or less. Only has about a hundred and a buck thirty seven pages, one thirty seven. And I'm trying to find this spot. And here it is. This is uh, pulled from the book, but it breaks down kind of where this book is leading to. There are thousands of agreements you have made with yourself, with other people, with your dream of life, with God, with society, with your parents, with your spouse, with your children. But the most important agreements are the ones you made with yourself. In these agreements, you tell yourself who you are, what you feel, what you believe, and how to behave. The result is what you call your personality. In these agreements, you say, this is what I am, this is what I believe, I can do certain things, and some things I cannot do. This is reality, this is fantasy, this is possible, that is impossible. That prefaces the book, there's another couple pages, and we start off with your first agreement. Be impeccable with your word. Um, the book says that the first agreement is the most important one and also the most difficult one to honor. Um, being impeccable with your word is, is pretty tricky. But it's the first agreement, and he says it's the first uh, agreement that you'll need to um, accomplish before you can transcend, transcend to level of, uh, I can't even say this. It's the first agreement you'll have to accomplish to be able to transcend to level of, of existence I call heaven on earth. It sounds very simple, but it's very powerful. Being impeccable with your, with your word says when I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. It's just as simple as that. Um, or if I'm going to not do something, right? Because saying no to things can be just as powerful as saying yes. Uh, you're not going to do that. So one thing might be, I'm not going to smoke. You have to be impeccable with your word. Um, I'm going to go to the gym every day. You got to be impeccable with your word. Um, whatever the case may be, is it's the most powerful. It's the hardest one to do, being impeccable with your word. Now I'm going to try to make these uh, book reviews mini and, and tiny. So uh, I'm going to keep on rolling. I'm just going to summarize this book. I'm not going to go through every chapter of, every, of uh, all these books and talk about every chapter. Giving you kind of a full range synopsis. Uh, what you can get out of it, some of the power quotes I got out of it, and we're going to go from there. Now, jumping ahead to the second agreement, I have my second my agreement card cheat sheet that I got from a friend named Angela Blair. Angela, if you're listening, uh, this is the cheat sheet you gave me. Throw it on the fridge so I can remember. Sometimes you're running crazy and can't remember the four agreements, but you can be pleasantly reminded by a little cheat sheet like this. You can just print this out. This is like business card size. Uh, you can roll with it in your car, your wallet. Uh, your desk at your office, uh, wherever, and you can be pleasantly reminded. The second agreement, which is um, really a fun one, is don't take anything personally. So don't take anything personally. Whatever happens around you, this is the quote from the book, whatever happens around you, don't take it personally. Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. That's a very powerful statement within itself because... You always want to try to make, um, you always want to take it personally. He said, I'm not good enough. And you're like, oh, well, maybe I'm not good enough. Um, 
but then you're like, dude, I don't even know this guy. Or, you know, someone gets mad at you at the store or Starbucks, you're fighting the crowd or, you know, tech support or customer service. And they get you all riled up by saying things that don't make sense or they get you riled up by uh, leading you down a path or an outcome that you don't want to um, accept to be true. And you take all this personally like, it's uh, they're attacking you and they didn't ship the product out. They didn't create the the product. They didn't sew together the bag. They're just the front line telling you what the facts are. Uh, it's gonna be delayed. You gotta send it back or whatever. So don't take anything personally. The more you can take not personally, uh, the happier you're gonna be, the lighter, more airy you're gonna be. Um, when you take it personally, maybe someone else is having a bad day or, or you don't know where they're coming from and they're gonna try to dump and unload uh, all this garbage and, and stuff onto you. But if you don't accept it and you say, hey, I'm closed, man. I'm not gonna take uh, anything you do or your actions or how you're yelling at me, anything personally. I'm gonna smile uh, and talk like a normal voice and a normal attitude. Um, you can keep on moving. So don't take anything personally. Whatever people say to you or interactions that may get crazy or outcomes that you don't want to accept, uh, don't take them personally. That person is not well, in some cases, they are uh, actively trying to, you know, make you mad or whatever. But hey, don't take it personally, dude. You don't know what their uh, their reasoning of them trying to be whatever hurtful, mean to you is about. So don't take anything personally. And these these four agreements are pretty high up there in the sense that uh, you know it's it's kind of like a code of ethics and a code of honor. Um, sometimes it's really hard in the moment to remember. Chris said, or, you know, Miguel Ruiz said, I should not take this personally, but you, sometimes you just snap and you explode and you forget what, you know, about the four agreements or whatever. So it's really hard to, it's sometimes really hard to abide by the four agreements. These are just some guidelines, a code of ethics. It's a really good book. You got to read it, giving you the 30,000 foot view. Uh, Chloe, you know, I had to go get the audible version for Chloe, you know, because she hears and, you know, the pages stick with uh, cat paws. <laughs> agreement number three. I always have to try to bring Chloe in somehow. Agreement number three. Don't make assumptions. Uh, if others tell you something, we make assumptions. And if they don't tell us something, we make assumptions to fulfill our need to know and to replace the need to communicate. Even if we hear something and we don't understand, we make assumptions about what it means and then believe the these assumptions that we make up. We, we make up all sorts of assumptions because we don't have the courage to ask questions. That was a direct quote from the book. Um, I have these up on my screen if you're watching as my eye gaze goes out. If you're listening, you don't even know what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna keep rolling. When you make assumptions, um, and this is all coming from the book, when you make assumptions, like the quote was saying, you have some sort of need to fulfill um, something. So if someone says, Man, I'm trying to think of an example in real life uh, real quick. Someone says, okay. Man, I can't. I'm at a loss. So <laughs> I wish I could come up. I'm going to come up with an assumption. Um, oh, okay. Here's just a simple assumption that uh, Dr. Tim Ross, a family friend, told me uh, the other day about fuzzy logic. And I'm not going to go down that road right now. But let's say... Um, Someone says, that tree is tall, or I'm close, or I'm on my way. If you say I'm close, I assume maybe, I don't know, like right down the street, I'm talking five or minutes less, but somebody else, maybe their definition of close being, I don't know, as closer than I was when I left my house, maybe close to them is 10 minutes or 15 minutes away. So I would make an assumption that, hey, close means five minutes, uh, they're five minutes away. Let's get ready. Uh, let's get, you know, Chloe all fooded up and water changed out and good to go. So if I have to leave, you know, we can roll and I'm ready to go when they show up. But then I'm all doing this and getting all ready. And then I'm five minutes is up. And I'm staring at the watch going, okay, they're not here. Then you call him. It's like, hey, where are you, dude? You said you were close. It's like, no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm another five minutes out. Oh, well, I, I assumed uh, that you were closer. But if you ask the question, hey, I'm close, I'm like, oh, cool, is that five minutes close, 10 minutes close? And you're like, oh, 10 minutes, and boom, we could kick it uh, and slow things down and get everything ready. So 
the famous quote, you know, in life is making assumptions makes an ass out of you and me. So don't make assumptions. If you need to know the facts, you have to ask the questions. I'm getting bright on the screen here. So don't hesitate to ask the questions. Otherwise, you're going to assume things. And if someone doesn't tell you something, you're going to build this weird alternate plan of, of you know, what, what it means and what it doesn't mean. And you're going to insert your thoughts and you're going to get spun out into something crazy when someone says something. So <laughs> I don't know if this makes any sense. I hope it does, guys, uh, if you're listening to this podcast or, or watching. Fourth agreement in the four agreements is always do your best. Um, I had the always do your best chapter up in my book here. So I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. It's only six or seven chapters. Um, so it's really good. Let's see. There's a couple quotes out here I'm going to pull out manually from the book. I didn't go digital and write it down on the computer. Um, and it's just going to, I'm just going to pull it right from the front. Under any circumstance, always do your best. No more and no less. But keep in mind that your best is never going to be the same from one moment to the next. Everything is alive and changing all the time. So your best will sometimes be high quality and other times will be not as good. When you wake up refreshed and energized in the morning, your best will be better than when you are tired at night. Um, and... In your everyday moods, your best can change from one moment to another, from one hour to the next, from one day to another. Your best will change over time. As you build the habit of the four agreements, your best will become better than it used to be. But uh, always doing your best um, is a great habit to start at. Like it says, it's never going to be the same as it was the day before. Um, you know, every human is an artist, and the dream of your life is to make beautiful art. So you always have to do your best that you can, and doing your best sometimes may not be what you did the day before. Your best changes over time, like the book says, changes hourly, changes day um, and night, month after month. But if you go out and attack uh, life, or attack a project, or attack a situation, doing your best, and you can, at the end of the day, say, hey, I did everything I can, I did my best, I laid everything out right, I." Went over and tr tried to look over if my spelling was correct. That's a big problem I have is spelling. I visually write it down and I see it. And then someone says, hey, you spelled it wrong. Didn't you see that? It's like, no, dude, because I, I don't know. I went back it three or four times and zoned it and your mind just sees whatever. So to me, that was my best. But to someone else, that wasn't my best, right? So, but that goes back to um, agreement number two. I'm not going to take it personally if someone says, hey, dude, you're, you misspelled this word and you know, whatever, and said, hey, I did my best, man. I'm not going to take this personally. This is internal thought, or you can be external thought and just tell them straight up, hey, I did my best. Um, I went over it a few times. Maybe next time I will have you look over it before I publish it, and that's what I do. I have a guy at, at work um, that I help. I Once I design everything in Adobe InDesign or Adobe Illustrator, I print it out and give it to him, and I say, hey, I've stared at this 10 minutes. It looks great to me. You mark it up. And sometimes I get 100%. Sometimes I get a 90. Sometimes I get a 50. I don't take it personally, but I'm asking him for advice. Um, and, and I don't make assumptions that... Uh, I try not to make assumptions that everybody's going to understand my verb verbiage or lingo or how I'm trying to convey my message um, or how I'm using my uh, vocabulary. So I make an assumption sometimes that, yeah, over, everybody knows what I'm saying here. But taken out of context or something like that, they may not. So I pass it on to him. He says, dude, what are you talking about here? This word's misspelled. I don't understand what the sentence means. So that's, that's kind of one real-life example of probably all of those uh, agreements minus being impeccable with your word. Um, this is a great book. Uh, I don't know if I can – I don't know if it would be very helpful to rank these books out of, you know, one to five uh, Chloe Cats – um, five Chloe cats, meaning this book is, you know, a must buy one Chloe cat, meaning, Hey, read it, but, uh, move on. Um, I don't know if Chloe cats is even a perfect rating. I'm just thinking of <laughs> things that I would rate on the, on the show, maybe, uh, burritos, uh, red hot being a, you know, red, red chili burrito. I'm just going off tangents. Uh, but I told you to keep it short. So I'm going to dial her back. 
um, and get this thing done, this book review. I don't know if I don't know if ranking these books is is uh, apl applicable here. Um, some of the books that I've read on my journey are like, man, this is kind of a conglomerate of four or five books, um, kind of has the same knowledge but said in different ways, and you get something out of it. This book uh, is not like any of the other books. This is, if I did have to rank it, would be five Chloe cats, and it is very worth buying you can get these books on amazon i'll have a link in the description you just click that link it'll jump hop skip you on the inner web on the inner road interstate super highway um well you wouldn't be hopping or skipping on the interstate super highway it'll take you on an interstate super rural road or frontage road to uh you know amazon digital amazon store where you could walk in buy this you can get it used and shipped for like i don't know a dollar plus 3.99 shipping or buy it brand new whatever however you roll get it on audible i think um great book these uh that's my that's my bookmark four agreements four agreements uh get a quick rundown once again be impeccable with your word. The hardest one to do states the book. And if you actually practice this in real life, it is really hard to do because you say, hey, I'm going to be there at 7 o'clock. And then you, I don't know, you life attacks you as hard as it hit as it does. And you're all spun out. People call you. You're on other projects. And you're like, oh, shoot, it's 640. I'm going to call him and say, hey, dude, I'm on my way. I'm, I'm close. He thinks I'm five minutes away. My close uh, is... 10 minutes or whatever the case may be it's really five and you know his may be 10 but for example's sake then don't make assumptions that's agreement three right he's assuming i'm assuming there's multiple assumptions makes ass out of you and me don't make assumptions ask questions don't make an assumption and just get spun out in some alternate theory that may not even exist uh just ask the questions so don't assume Clarify with questions and you'll be, you'll be all good. Assumption number two is don't take anything personally. Very hard to do also um, if, when you're trying your best, which is assumption number four. I'm doing an upside down four if you're watching. Uh, or I can do a right side up four or an upside down four, whatever. Just do your best and your best changes minute to minute, second to second. If you're at the gym, your best may not be the best your PR personal record, which is your best of your best. If you're at the gym, your PR uh, for that day may change. And that's because of what you ate, your mindset, where you're at, fatigue, how much you've done before. So all these factors come into doing your best. But if you go out there and literally try to do your best and you can say, hey man, I did my best. I'm comfortable with the product I produce. I'm comfortable with the paper I wrote. I'm comfortable with the gym workout I accomplished. I'm, com I'm comfortable with the day. I won the day because I did the best I could with what I had in the circumstances and what I could control. Then you've done it. Um, doing it half-assed or doing not your best and moping around and being lazy and kind of half, you know, doing a, a set or something like that. You know, it's not doing your best. It's not going to help you out. Um, but it will get you through the day. It won't help you out in the long run. Don't take anything personally. I kind of skipped over that. Don't take don't take anything personally is um, I think one of my hardest ones is because when when you create stuff like this video, your podcast, and you have Dave saying, "Hey, why are you using 4K wide?" and I don't know how to use this GoPro camera, or you know whatever the case is, it's like hard to take that personally because you created this product. Uh, if anybody's creative listening to this podcast, they know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm creative, so that's how I can relate to you guys. If you are. When you put time into effort or to, if you're not creative and you're trying to mod podge something or do a, a vision board or, you know, kind of wrap a gift, um, I'm not really good at wrapping gifts. Guido Florentino, my family knows this because when I wrap gifts, it's like, I don't know, it's like, does this kid, clearly doesn't, has no wrapping abilities whatsoever. Um, but I don't take that personally. I said, mentally, you know, with my skills, I was not born with, with wrapping. Uh, that is not one of the skills I was born with, and I'm okay with admitting that. So when people say, dude, this looks like uh, garbage, uh, or this is not the best rap job, I don't take that person. Because I, I know I did the best I could in that moment of time. I put the tape on, I fold the corners, and it got all crinkly. And I, you know, I did it two or three times, and 
hey, this is the best I could produce. I'm not a rapping genius. I'm not, you know, the guy Dillard's who's like pro, right? At rapping gifts during Christmas season. I'm, this is not who I am and I'm not gonna focus all this time on a weakness. So I'm not gonna take it personally. I'm just gonna produce a product, do my best, assumption number four, and move on with life. Uh, not assumption number four, agree, agreement number four, move on with life. Okay guys, I gave you just kind of a brief 20 minute rundown of the four agreements. Great book, I give it five Chloe cats, which is the highest Chloe cat rating, you know, um, that we can offer. The Alchemist of probably six Chloe cats, you know, just going back to my word, what I just said. I know what I said, but the Pilot Coil Alchemist is by far the number one, number number one book that you must read if you're reading books. Four Agreements is also high up there. One Chloe cat below uh, the top of the top. And uh, thank you guys for listening. If you want to buy this, I have a link in the description below. I'll shoot you on the Amazon Super Frontage Road to their digital online store where you can hit buy in a used form or brand new or borrow from a friend, go to your local library. Books are attainable and they're very cheap. So guys, thank you for watching book number two review, which is The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz, or if you prefer, Don Miguel Ruiz. A very super short read, about a half inch thick, hundred and buck thirty-seven. I said earlier, I think on the pages goes by fast. You could bust out one or two agreements. This is a. I try to read my books in within one week's time. Um, this book did not take one week's time to read. For me, I'm a slow reader. Some of you are like, dude, this took you one week. No, it didn't. But I'm a slow reader, so it was, it was close, like three or four days. Um, and I write down quotes, and I get all sidetracked, and then I pet Chloe, and then you know. My reading time for the night's done. Super quick read. Um, thank you guys for watching. My name is Chris Martin with The Real Albuquerque. Chloe Cat is running around doing Chloe Cat things. Thank you for watching. This is a must buy, and I will see you guys next week. We have some guests, guests coming up. Just a little quick plug for the show. Um, we have uh, some law enforcement and some firefighter people joining us on the cast. Uh, we'll hopefully get international Chinese speaker, traveler, Kara Bad. Kara, if you're listening or watching or, I don't know, teleporting into this thing uh, through telekinesis, uh, can't wait to get you on the show. And we have some other people lined up too. So, hey guys, this is the end of the review. Go out and buy this book. I highly recommend it. And we'll see you guys next week for book review number three and possibly a guest. All right, thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention as always. Thank you. Bye guys.